Hola. Anyong haseo. Kumusta? <laughs> there are so many ways to greet people. But no matter what you use, it's always nice to say your greetings with a smile on your face. We greet people when we see each other, when we meet someone new, and that's also how we start new conversations with our friends and our families. Hi, I'm a pizza delivery man. I deliver different kinds of pizzas, and I also love pizza. <laughs> We all have different preferences of pizza. Some like it thick, some like it thin, some like it plain, and some like it spicy. But if you ask me, this is how I like it. This is a pie graph of the ingredients of my kind of pizza. Can you tell me what kind of pizza do I like most? <laughs> yes, yes, a cheesy pizza. Pizza with lots of cheese. About half of all its ingredients are all cheese. Mmm. Now, what's another ingredient do you think I love to be on my pizza? Yes, meat. I want about one-fourth of my pizza to be meat. It can be ham or beef or sausage. With meat, a lot of cheese and some pineapple, onions, and bell pepper. I can eat pizzas all day. <laughs> you? <laughs> what about you? What kind of pizza do you like? Hey! My boss gave me this and asked me about the deliveries I made. This is a pictograph. We can see here the pizza flavors and numbers of orders. Can you help me answer his questions? He asked me which pizza flavor has the most deliveries. Is it the cheese pizza? Let's look at the pictograph. Yes! It has the most orders. The cheese pizza has three orders. He also asked me how many ordered a spicy pizza. Can you tell me how many spicy pizzas did I deliver? Let's look at the pictograph. Correct! I delivered two. And lastly, my boss also wants to know which has the least orders. Let's look at the pictograph. Ah, I think it is the plain pizza because it only has one order. <laughs> Thanks for helping me. Time to tell my boss about my deliveries. Bye. Mm -hmm. I don't think I forgot anything. It should be fine. Okay, my things are packed and I'm ready for adventure. Oops. A message. My friend just messaged me that there's a storm coming. Oh, but it's fine because he will be giving me tips on how to survive this storm. Mm, but, but it says here that he will be giving me tips on how to survive this. Once the typhoon arrives... Huh? What? What? Wait, wait, wait. Once the typhoon arrives, what? Did he just message me a subordinate clause? It's incomplete. This is just a group of words that cannot stand on their own. Once the typhoon arrives, what? Oh, wait, here's another message. Stay indoors. Stay indoors. Okay, okay, okay. This is an independent clause. It is a group of words that can stand on their own. It makes sense. Huh, I see. 
I have to connect the subordinate clause to this independent clause. Once the typhoon arrives, stay indoors. So there. Once the typhoon arrives, stay indoors. Or stay indoors once the typhoon arrives. Whew. The subordinate clause and independent clause are connected by a subordinating conjunction, which is once. Oh, there's the message. It says that when the storm comes, I should just stay here. Hmm. I think the storm is coming soon. So I'll stay here. Another message? If you are in a low area... If you are in a low area, what? The storm is coming and it's very dangerous and he keeps texting me with another subordinate clause. I am in a low area, so what do I need to do? If you are in a low area, it cannot stand on its own. Why does he have to send me a subordinate clause? Okay, okay, calm down. This may be incomplete, but he might message an independent clause. Let's wait. Let's wait. Yes, I knew it! Go to a higher ground. Okay, there you go. It's an independent clause. Go to a higher ground. All I have to do is connect the subordinate clause to an independent clause. The subordinating conjunction, which is if, will connect them. If you are in a low area, go to higher ground. Or, go to higher ground if you are in a low area. Oh, there's the message. Okay, it says that before the storm comes, if you're in a low area, you must go to a higher ground. What? Oh no, I have to get out of here. Ah, ah, the storm is coming soon. I have to find higher ground. Why didn't he text me earlier? Ah, is everything here? Did I leave anything? Bye. Yo, what's up? It's James Les Reed here, and I know that you know about the K N, W R, and G N words. Can you tell me what they have in common? The first letter is silent, and the beginning sound is given by the second letter. Remember no and rap and knock? The knock and wreck and gnarled? <laughs> Let's see if you can complete these words. This is the first word. Yes! Gnome. How about this? Yup, that's a knee. How about this? Knife. That's correct. Okay, last one. Of course, that's right. <laughs> I mean, right with a WR. You get it? Right, right, WR. <laughs> so I'll see you again next time with more K N, W R, and G N words. Thank you for being with us today. We'll see you again next time. Remember, my room is your room. Goodbye!